In this lesson, we'll cover track settings. To access track settings, hit the right touchpad to bring up the editor menu and scroll down to track settings. You can also use the radio menu by hitting down on the D-pad and scrolling with the right stick. The first option is game mode settings. This opens up track properties. The first option here is game type. Here you can choose what type of track you want to build from a trials track, skill game, ninja, supercross, dual cross, or x supercross. You'll notice when selecting supercross you get a warning. This warning means some features and objects may be disabled, and if you're using physics or animation, it'll impact the performance more than it would a regular trials track. The options in this menu change depending on what game mode you select, and we will cover these in later videos, but for now, we'll just cover the trials game type. The second setting is difficulty. Here is where you choose the skill level for your track, or in other words, how hard your track is going to be for other players to complete. Scroll left or right to go from beginner all the way up to ninja. Try to be consistent with your track skill level when building, and try not to stray too far one way or the other with the obstacles. Remember, your skill level will always be getting better over time, so something that's easy for you may be really hard for other players. This is why you should try to get a few friends of varying skill levels to test your tracks and gauge the skill level from that. The third setting is allowed bikes. Here you can choose which bikes players will be allowed to pick when playing your track. You can choose all bikes, just one, or any combination of bike you like. The checked bikes are the ones that will be available for riders to choose from. Remember to test each bike you include, and don't include bikes that aren't powerful enough to make it through your track. The next setting is recommended bike. Here is where you suggest to players which bike you think would be best to ride in your track, even though you may allow other bikes to be used in your track. Next we have countdown delay. Here is where you would set the time before the countdown timer starts at the beginning of your track. You would need to use this if you have a start animation in your track, which we'll discuss in later tutorials. Next we have enable countdown delay skip. Select this option if you want to allow players to skip the countdown delay start animation, if you have one in your track. The next option is delay after finish. You would use this if you had an ending animation or you wanted time before the ending track results came up on the screen. Next is metal limits. Here is where you set the metal times. Be sure to test your track well before setting metal times, and once again, if you can, it's always a good idea to get a few people of varying skill levels to test your track. Try to set the metal times so there is a challenge, but it's not impossible for players to get various metals. Track description is next. Selecting this option will open a text field where you can write a brief description of your track that users will be able to read when browsing tracks. Try to describe your track so users get a good idea of what's in store for them when playing your track. Next is Game Character. This option lets you choose what your game character is. Default is the rider, but sometimes when building skill games you may not use the rider. This is where you would set whatever game character you're using. To do this, select Custom Object and then select the object you're using. Some items, which we'll discuss in later videos, like cameras, use the position of your game character as a perimeter. By setting your custom game character here, these items will automatically know to use the custom object instead of the bike or rider. Next we have Enable Bike Steering. Selecting this option allows you to use the right stick to turn the bike right and left off of the driveline. Right stick up turns the bike left, and right stick down turns the bike right. After that we have Crash Message Enabled. Here is where you can turn off the crash text when the rider crashes. Deselecting this option means the crash message will not be displayed when your rider crashes. Now let's hit Circle and back out to Track Settings. Our next option is Environment Settings. This has an endless number of options you can set to get different looks for your tracks, and we'll get into this in greater detail in a later tutorial. But for now, let's move on to Music Playlist. Here is where you pick the music to be playing in your track. The first checkbox decides whether or not your track will have music. If checked, you will have music from the in-game playlist available. Next is Playlist Type. Normal will play music from the in-game soundtrack in a random order. Other options include custom, hip-hop, metal, or many others arranged by genre. If you use custom, you can add tracks manually by picking select song and pick the songs you want to include. You can click shuffle to play the songs in a random order, or the selected songs will play in the order they were added to the playlist.